So for the last two months, I've been working on and off on my driveway, getting ready to install some gravel. And I wouldn't have done this before unless I'd actually done my patio and I was really happy with it. So I thought, I think I can do this. So if you wanna see how I'm getting on, then keep on watching. So before I get started, I need to take you on a time travel adventure back to 2014. And it was April when we first moved in. And I found this old footage from another video that was three months after. And originally there was just one driveway and the rest was grass and these three conifers that were stubborn buggers to get out. And we had three vehicles at the time as well, one camper van and two cars. And we were desperate for the space. So by November 2014, my dad's mate actually came and gave us a hand. And using a digger, he ripped out a lot of the concrete up to where our gate is now and completely ripped out all of the grass and the conifers, leaving us a little bit of greenage at the front. And we also ordered a load of sub base that he'd spread out for us, but he never put any membrane down. And for the last three years, we've had a lot of weeds and I wasn't particularly happy. So I felt like I needed to start afresh and dig it all out. But it has served a purpose for the three vehicles that eventually became two. So let's return back to 2017 and I ordered a skip again. And we already had loads of concrete that we needed to ditch from doing our fencing the other month. So I do regret not getting a bigger one. So the main thing I wanted to focus on was to completely rip up all of the concrete. Now, it wasn't a quick job. So I just took my time and broke the whole lot, taking regular breaks, wearing ear defenders and a mask, and ripped it up and chucked it in the skip. And don't forget, as usual, I'm gonna leave all the links to the things I'm using below. And this concrete breaker was from JTS for 120 quid, but I have seen one in Screwfix recently for 100. I don't know how good it is, but it's out there. And something that I wanna point out is I never dug too deep. It was more just chipping away at the surface, just in case I went through something that I didn't want to. I fancy some sleep now. and then I sprayed the whole area with weed killer. But I did this while my dog Hans wasn't around and left it to dry. But one thing I did do was leave the broken concrete in situ right at the back in front of the garage. And that was for a couple of reasons. The skip was already full, it was a nice height, so we'd treat it as a sub base within itself. And another thing that I noticed on the concrete at the side of the house was somebody had put concrete on top of tarmac. So I had to get rid of that as well. And if you watched my video a couple of weeks ago, I had to be very careful around my manhole. I purposely didn't chip too close to it because I didn't want anything to fall underneath. So uh, yeah, I'll leave a link to that video below because I think it's useful in case you're in a similar boat. So another thing that we really wanted to sort out was knock down this pillar, which is ours, and it's smack bang between us and the neighbor's house. And it's just always been in the way. But because we live on a main road, we both agreed with the neighbors that it would be best to be gone because then we could reverse on an angle if needed. So we didn't have the best tool for this, but we just used a concrete breaker. But then I'd had enough of this by the time I'd done the drive. So I passed that on to my fiance. So then I wanted to rip up all the topsoil that had settled on top of the aggregate because we'd never got around to putting gravel there as we should have done. And that was because when the original skip was taken away, it became a little pool from the rain and that never had any aggregate down. So you'd probably say I took a scenic route and I dug it all up and I'd flip between a post hole digger and a regular spade and shovel. Now I would have absolutely loved to use a digger but a handful of people put me off saying they were very easy to topple over and I wouldn't be capable and yeah, I probably shouldn't have listened to them because I might have been able to do it in a day or two. So if you've got the guts and confidence, then go for it. Oh, and I forgot to say that we were actually working to a string line as well, but we'd knocked it so many times. It is in the background, but I'll show you that properly later when we do actually put some sleepers there. And I purposely focused on digging this area first because we needed to order a second skip and this is where it was gonna go. And then our original one was full to the rim and they took it away. And once we're about halfway digging up the ground, I thought it'd be a good idea to finish off the rest of the fencing. Now, I'm not gonna show you how to do fencing on this one, but I will leave a video link below and you're more than welcome to watch that. What are you doing? Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing in a skip? Hey? 
So at this stage, we didn't really know what we were going to do with the trees at the front, but they certainly weren't pretty and we didn't know what some of them were. But for now, we just tidied it up by removing all of the grass and everything that had merged with it as well, just to give it more definition. And although I didn't catch it on film, we did actually decide to chop those trees down anyway. And any obvious weeds and grassy areas, I just got on my hands and knees using a kneeling pad and just ripped them out wearing gloves. And then finally we had our first delivery of sub base. And here I've got six bulk bags. Well, it works out about 800 kilograms, I think, per bag. But before we did anything with that, we had to make sure that the second skip that we filled was removed. But yeah, that wasn't an easy job for them because they got the hydraulic legs stuck in the grass and they kept sinking in the ground and the skip company had to get his mate to come and tow him away and blocked the road. So the next day, once the skip was gone, we made sure we sprayed the whole front area with weed killer. We'd already done the side, but never the front. And again, it was dog free and we had to wait for that to dry. But I didn't dig as much up on this side because it was very firm, there were less weeds in general anyway, and so many of you said to me that the initial ground needs to be firm for gravel to work. And this was the firmest out of them all. And then it was time to completely cover everywhere with weed control. And I'd overbought massively from when we laid some in the patio a couple of years ago. So it was actually handy. And we laid it all out, but overlapped by about 30 centimetres just so nothing sank into the ground. And then me and my fiance had a system where I would continue laying out each roll where he started shoveling the sub base on the stuff that was already down. So it became a bit of a game where we were racing each other and uh, yeah, I had to do this very quickly. And then once we'd run out of rolls, we were both shoveling it out. And I have to say, I enjoyed this. Two, buckle, <laughs> my. And then to get to the areas we couldn't reach, we created some mounds using a wheelbarrow. So then I'd evenly rake it out while my fiance kept bringing barrows of it. So once we'd covered most of the weed control that we'd put down, we went out and bought some more. And I think I paid about 45 pounds or something for a hundred meters from Tool Station. It was definitely cheaper there. But for the last two or three, we rolled it out right to the end where the garage is. So if you combine the side and the front, it's about 90 square metres. It's quite a big area. And from here, it was just continuous shoveling and spreading sub base. So once we'd spread that all out, we then had another full bulk bag delivery of sub base and some treated railway sleepers that were going to turn into borders and some raised bedding for the tree area that we cut down. But sadly, I'm going to have to group that into a part two video. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to break this up into a part two video at least because we're obviously not finished yet. And um, yeah, if you like the progress, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Uh, yeah, it's not the most ideal job for winter, but we just could not wait. So uh, it, it was warmer than this when we started, I promise. So yeah, hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.